Hello everybody, this is Jacob Lawler here with another how-to video, this time on how to create a template in your Zipform Plus account. Uh, so right here I'm in my home page of my Zipforms Plus account. Uh, yours will look something similar to this. If you haven't done any transactions before, this will obviously be blank. But what we're gonna actually spend some time in is this little tab up here, the templates tab. Now I've deleted all my templates so I can start from scratch here with you. Uh, but what I always recommend new agents uh, or any agents who are just beginning in templates to create two template uh, styles. Uh, the first one is gonna be offer and that's gonna be the one that we go over today. Uh, but if you wanna do it later, then obviously you can just duplicate this process for the other one, which is taking a listing for the listing documents. But for an offer, we're gonna be doing a purchase type. Uh, that's gonna obviously be the type that we're gonna use with that. And we're gonna do this for a residential. Now, obviously if you work different types of, of businesses, you'll click for different, but for this purpose, we're gonna do residential. And I'm also gonna say, do not automatically apply this template to new transactions because I'm not always just making offers. Sometimes, you know, you'll be going after listings, but just click do not automatically apply for that. So we're gonna go ahead and click save and it's gonna open up uh, another screen that looks exactly like the screen that when you're creating a transaction, only you just wanna make sure that the templates tab is highlighted to make sure that you're do doing a template. So we're gonna go ahead and apply uh, or add the documents that we wanna to apply to our template. I always recommend starting with a cover sheet because the cover sheet, any items that you type into the cover sheet automatically get added to any subsequent or additional forms that you add to your transaction or your template. So the second thing we're gonna add is our residential purchase agreement. For right now, I recommend only adding those two documents to this transaction only because you don't wanna start adding in all the additional items right off the bat because then your then your transaction gets really convoluted and you have to scroll through to kind of find all the documents. So let's start off with just these two. So we're gonna start with the cover sheet and we're gonna go over what items that to actually put in your cover sheet template. So obviously buyers, you're gonna be writing offers for different buyers unless you're working with a particular investor who you're only working with them. In that case, you would put their name in here. But for the most part, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be writing offers for different clients. So we're gonna leave this section blank. The only thing I personally, and this is again, personal preference, I like to check the boxes anywhere there to initial and sign. Just for me, I like to add that in there because I think it looks nicer. Um, transaction. Uh, cover sheet as far as the property information. Now we're gonna be having different properties. Hopefully we're writing offers on different properties. So we're not gonna add in specific information about an actual property there. Escrow, that's gonna change. But what isn't gonna change is you being the selling broker uh, because this is the buyer's agents section in here. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our information and I am with First Team Real Estate, 12501 Seal Beach Boulevard in Seal Beach, California, and I'm gonna also add in Suite 100, our BRE number, our broker of record, Bill Plattos, 10100877 Seal Beach, California. I don't like adding in the route number in here, so I'm gonna delete those last four. I'm gonna put in our office information, 5962596991. My name, Jacob Lawler. My BRE number, 018-99247. Putting in the number here, 562. My phone number, 760-2782. Fax number, our office fax, 562-596-4661. Cell phone number, 562-760-2782. Feel free to text me anytime, haha. <laughs> Jacob Lawler at firstteam.com. Something to, something to note here, uh, in terms of the email address, try to make your email address the same email address that is on the MLS, on the board of realtors, and have, try to have everything the same email address, because it starts getting confusing when you look their number up on the roster, and it's one number, and then it's another email on the offer, so try to make everything the same that you have in here. Now on the cover sheet, that's really the only thing we're gonna add on the cover sheet, because the rest of the things and the items will change as time goes on. Now before we leave this document, make sure to click save and then we're going to go ahead and click back. 
Now we're going to open up the residential purchase agreement, which is actually a number of different forms that are attached. Now this first page obviously says the attached forms. So we're going to scroll down to the first form itself, which is the disclosure regarding real estate agency relationship. The only thing we're going to add on here because it's already inputted your information here, because again, we added it on the cover sheet. We're just going to go ahead and click the buyer boxes in here to sig signify the buyer here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to make sure all the information is correct. Perfect. Everything looks good. Now we're going to actually go to the RPA itself. Now the date that you prepare the RPA is going to differ depending on when you're writing the offer. Obviously all this information is going to be different depending upon what the offer uh, property, the subject property is going to be and also who the buyers are. So this will change. Uh, but what won't change is that you're going to be representing the buyer. Most of the time when I'm personally writing offers, I would be rep representing the buyer exclusively. So I'm going to go ahead and check that box. Uh, if you're, if the listing agent is the same brokerage as you, you would actually on that individual offer delete here, just write your brokerage and say both buyer and seller. You actually don't need to add anything down here, but most of the time I'm going to just be representing the buyer exclusively. Now, uh, initial deposit, um, I personally uh, like to do it uh, electronics funds transfer, which is the default in the contract. Uh, but if you like to do personal checks, boom, all you would need to do is check this box here. Now, we're going to get into individual check boxes, things to do. Um, I'm going to have down in the links down below uh, a copy of a sample document or a sample offer that I would recommend just copying uh, word for word on your template. So go ahead and check down in the links below for that. But we're just going to go through and rock it through this uh, for the individual items that I recommend changing. Um, now in the first loan, you have to have some sort of information in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in a 5% uh, rate not to exceed and pay points not to exceed 1%. Um, now as rates change, uh, these will these numbers will need to change. But as of right now is recording this video, this is a pretty good number to add in here as a cap. But again, check with your lender uh, as to far as where the rates are right now and where you should cap this. Again, we can change this to four and a half to, you know, 4.75, whatever, whatever is a good point right now. Um, this defaults to conventional financing. So anytime that you have a client who's FHA, like if you always work FHA or VA, go ahead and check this box. Because again, this is a, every time you use this template that will add that information in there. Uh, now for verification of down payment and closing costs, I personally always include that with my offers as well as the loan applications or the pre-approval, pre-qual or DU or LP approval with there. Um, so I would add those in for my templates. If you don't always have that, don't have it. Um, then down towards the bottom, um, down in here, I personally recommend adding in the seller to pay for natural hazard zone disclosure report, including environmental. And I just always recommend putting in seller's choice. Now we can get into a debate about what to put in there. But again, for template purposes, I personally like putting in seller's choice. If you always use LGS or whatever, feel free to put in your uh, person of choice. I'm not here to advocate one company over another. Um, in my offers, I always ask for the seller to pay for smoke alarm and carbon monoxide. I also say to uh, pay for the cost of mandatory minimum government inspections and reports and to also pay for mandatory, mandatory government retrofit standards. Um, buyer and seller for escrow for escrow fees. I always like to say each to pay their own. I don't like putting 50 50 because it's actually not 50 50 um, as far as who's due for what cost. So I like to put in each to pay their own escrow holder shall be sellers choice. And you can also add in of a D B O escrow company. This is just saying that you want one that's overseen by the Department of Business Oversight if you want to do that. Or if you don't want to be that specific, you can just type in seller's choice. Um, also seller to pay for owner's title policy spe specified in paragraph 13 E issued by seller's choice. Or you can add in your preferred person of choice. That's up to you. Um, I always like to say seller to pay for county transfer fee. And I also like to say seller to pay for city transfer fee, but I add in there if applicable because I'm not sure which cities do, which cities don't. So I always add it in there if it's applicable. 
Obviously, if you work a lot of condos, you're gonna put in HOA, and you're also gonna put in HOA dock prep fees. I don't do a lot of condos or things in that nature, so I'm gonna leave those blank. And I'm also gonna say seller to pay for any tri private transfer fee if applicable in there, okay? Also gonna say seller to pay for cost not to exceed, I'm just gonna say $500 for an upgraded policy. Uh, let's say that it has air conditioning. I'm not sure if it has a pool or spa. Most of the time they don't, but if they do, I'm gonna add that in there. And I'm also gonna say a comprehensive plus plan, because that is the plan that uh, I always recommend for my clients. I'm gonna say buyer's choice in here. Items included and excluded, usually we ask for the stove, usually we ask for the refrigerator, so I'm gonna add that in there for me. If you don't like to do that, that's up to you. Again, coming down here, closing in possession. Most of the time that I'm writing offers, they are planning on living there, and most of the time they will have people in there. So I'm gonna say no later than three calendar days after the close of escrow. So that's just something that I like to put in here. Um, and I, there's not a lot of things to change on the rest of them. Um, personally, and again, this is personal. If you've watched the video on paragraph 14 that I've done that I'll also have down in the links down below, a link to that video, um, is I, I always like to make a buyer feel empowered by this paragraph in here. And what I'll do, because they feel so empowered by this paragraph, is I'll actually shorten these time periods uh, down to uh, three days for the seller to provide all of the reports and disclosures, and the buyer having 10 days after acceptance to, to do all their inspections and all of those items. If you don't like that, go ahead, delete them. If you don't like that, then you can go ahead and skip that. Uh, but I like to usually have them in there. And then down at the bottom where they sign saying that this is our offer, always I always like to put in, I like to put in my name as being an authorized person to receive the acceptance from that. And again, their names will be different. Just you, we wanna make sure on this 10th page of the RPA that your information is all filled out. That's really all the things that's gonna be in there, but I can't tell you how much time this will save you. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So that way, when you go back, and let's say we wanna create a transaction, and I wanna write a new offer, I'm gonna say test offer video and I wanna do a purchase in a, for residential property, I'm gonna apply my offer template and automatically when I create this transaction, it automatically inputs these two forms. So all I need to do is go in, add the property info, add my buyer info, add the price, and boom, my offer is already done. So I hope that was helpful on how to speed up the offer process and how to create a template in Zip Form Plus. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Also check the, the links down below for those links to the sample offer that I like to do as well as the paragraph 14 video that I've also done there. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'll see you on the next video.